With a wild center, this is Lunchtime Live. We're talking about nature and exciting wildlife. Encounters with otters and owls too. From Tupper Lake right to you. Learn about the plants and trees. There's so much to explore and see. Lunchtime Live, it's time to start the show. From the wild center, here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Michael here again for Lunchtime Live presents Nature Lab. This week in Nature Lab, we'll be exploring slime, animals and plants of the Adirondacks that are super slimy, and how to make some slime of your own. So let's get exploring. Uh, so before we get moving too far, I want you to take a moment and brainstorm all the different locations or places or different animals you can think of that create slime. You can write that down on a piece of paper. You can note it in your mind. Go ahead and pause the video for a second and we'll do some brainstorming. Welcome back everybody. I hope you had fun creating your lists of slimy organisms. We're going to focus in on some slimy organisms right here in the Adirondacks in just a couple minutes. But before we do, I wanted us to think about some different reasons why organisms would be slimy. Why would it be good to be covered in slime or make slime um, other than it just being super cool? Uh, so there are some organisms that will create slime to cover their body to keep themselves nice and wet. Uh, amphibians, frogs, toads, salamanders tend to come to mind when we're thinking about that. That way they don't dry out when they're out of the water. Even the water is a really, really important part of their life. Another reason that animals or plants uh, may have slime covering them is protection. So it could be protection from a predator, it could be keeping them safe from predators that may try to eat them, whether they can't eat them because of the slime coat, whether they don't want to eat them because of their being covered in slime. Um, or it just makes it difficult for them to eat them. Also, that protection could be from other things in the environment around them, other pathogens, things that could make them sick, uh, like bacteria or virus or otherwise. Uh, so organisms like fish have a slime coat on their body that can help protect them from other things that could make them sick in the water around them. And then lastly, it could, that slime could help the animal move um, or organism move through its environment. So if we think about a snail, that slime can help it move to some extent, but mostly it's really helping that, that snail climb from place to place. It's a great example of that, that movement connection or suction connection with the slime. Uh, so with that said, let's take a look at some of the different animals and plants here in the Adirondacks uh, that have that really, really awesome slime covering. Let's go. Okay, so this animal here is a snail. Uh, snails have a hard shell uh, protecting most of their body, uh, but the squishy part of their body that they use to move, and in the case of the snail right here, they use to hold on uh, to the environment around them, uh, is really squishy and doesn't have much protection. Uh, so snails make that slime or mucus for a couple different reasons. One is to protect their body, especially with land-based snails or terrestrial snails uh, like this one, uh, they're keeping their body nice and slimy so it doesn't dry out. Another benefit of the slime allows it to do exactly what it's doing right now. Uh, so one thing that you may think of when you think of a snail are those slimy trails that they leave behind. Uh, so that um, is some of their mucus. And what it's allowing them to do is one, to move a little bit better than they could if there was no mucus, they'd still be able to do so. Uh, but two, if they're not moving like this snail, that mucusy uh, bottom to their foot there allows them to stick on, in this case, the wall of their enclosure, uh, but in the wild, maybe climbing up a plant uh, or the side of a house and really to stay there uh, nice and safe as they wait uh, to find some more food and to go about their day. Our next slimy animal is an amphibian. It's this gray tree frog. So tree frogs and other species of amphibians like frogs and salamanders and toads to some extent have slimy bodies. That slime or mucusy body, one, helps them like the snail to prevent them from drying out. And two, in the case of, of many amphibians, it allows them to exchange gases through their skin. What that means is that they have what's called permeable skin. It means that 
air around them and oxygen around them uh, can go right through their skin and allow them to breathe a different way. Instead of taking a deep breath like you or I would, uh, they're able to breathe directly through that skin as well. Some amphibians will use slime to keep themselves nice and safe. Uh, so they can produce uh, some toxins uh, on their body. And if an animal was to come by and try to eat them, uh, they'll sometimes have warning colors or the animal will just learn uh, that one, the slime doesn't make them taste good, or two, it actually has some, some toxic or poisonous effects to it as well. Uh, so just a couple different ways that these awesome amphibians like our gray tree frog are really, really well adapted with their slime to keep them nice and safe um, and prosperous here in the Adirondacks. Another one of my favorite slimy organisms here in the Adirondacks is a plant that lives in aquatic environments, so ponds, lakes, and streams. You can find it down in the river, uh, just nearby on the Racket River, and you can find it in our pond on site, Greenleaf Pond. This plant looks a lot like water lilies. It grows with a long stalk and has an oval leaf. So instead of the round leaf with a little notch cut out of it that you'd see with a, a lily, uh, this plant, Water Shield, has more of an oval shaped leaf, no notches cut out of it at all. If you were to look at it from above, as you paddle around or look down into a, a water body, it looks very nice and shiny and green. At this point in the year, it's a little bit faded, uh, but shiny and green from the top. And then from the bottom, if you were to reach in and touch it, it's super slimy. So that slime on the bottom is effectively keeping it safe from predators. Uh, so any aquatic insects that would want to come up and munch on the plant can't really get to it from that mucusy, that slimy film on the bottom. And it may make it so other organisms don't want to eat it as well. Super cool. I highly recommend if you are out and about and find that oval shaped leaf have, as you're exploring an aquatic environment, highly recommend touching it. So over here we have some fish in our deep lakes tank. Uh, these fish, uh, mostly Atlantic salmon and a couple brook trout, have little slime coats on their body that again they're protecting them from anything else in the environment. Uh, that slime helps prevent bacteria or fungus from growing on their, their scales and their skin itself. Uh, keeps them nice and happy and healthy, whether they're here in an exhibit or out and about in the environments here in the Adirondacks. Welcome to the Naturalist Cabinet, everybody. So we just explored the exhibits and saw some animals and plants that are super slimy here in the Adirondacks. What we're going to do now is make our own slime uh, so that we can have some fun at home. So what you need first is a nice clear surface that can get slimy, can get dusty, can get a little bit dirty and is easy to wash off. I have these wonderful tables here in the naturalist cabinet that I'll be using, uh, but find that surface and we'll be exploring two different methods to make slime. And you're welcome to choose either one based on what you have at home. So one uses glue as the base and the other one uses cornstarch and water as the base. So without further ado, let's make some slime. Okay, so for our first method of slime creation, we just need two ingredients, water and cornstarch. This third ingredient is our optional ingredient to add a little bit more fun to it. I'm using some green food coloring, but you can use any dye uh, that you'd like. So with this, we have to mix together our ingredients. I've already measured them out. I have half a cup of cornstarch to start us off and a nice cup here of water. With water, it's very key that we use it slowly. So first, I need to grab a nice big bowl. Let's add our cornstarch. Add that cornstarch nice and slowly. It is very fine grained, so it will puff up uh, into the air around you. So I've got my cornstarch in a bowl. And with water, I'm going to take this and scoop out about a tablespoon at a time and add it to our, our bowl. So we'll add that. Let's try two tablespoons to start and we'll see how gloopy or slimy our slime ends up. So let's pick that up, stir it nice and slowly. Again, slowly so that it doesn't fluff out into the air around you. So it looks as though I've used not enough water yet. So let's add a little bit more water. Do another scoop here. 
stir that in. See, it's starting to get slimy. You'll notice that when you're digging through it with your spoon, um, you may, as I did, just flop it onto the table, but that's a good reason to keep, make sure that you have a table that is able to get dirty. Uh, so it's starting to get clumpy. I don't know if you can see on my spoon here, uh, but it's, it's starting to stick together. It's still a little bit dry. You'll notice when you don't move it, it starts flowing. Let's get that back in there. Maybe I can pick up some of my extra bits from the table here, throw it back in, and we'll do another tablespoon or two of water. So we are up to four, four and a half tablespoons now. Uh, for my slime, you can really see in there, it's starting to get really nice and slimy. So again, I ended up using about four and a half tablespoons of water for this. And it looks super liquidy, but when you touch it and actually pick it up, oh yeah, that's really good. Nice and slimy uh, with our cornstarch method. Didn't mention it at the beginning, but it's always good to have a towel on hand that can get some slime on it um, as you uh, manipulate it. So that's method one, water, cornstarch. And again, if you like it, you can add some food coloring to give it that nice um, coloration. This batch of slime ended up a little bit watery. Let's take a look at one that I use a little bit less water. So we used about four and a half tablespoons of water in this one with half cup of cornstarch. This one here also started off with a half cup of cornstarch, uh, but had a little bit less water, probably closer to four tablespoons, maybe three and a half. So let's see when we scoop this out. So you'll notice when you give it nice and thick, when you stick the spoon in there, it doesn't want to go through. But we'll scoop some out, put it on this here, and check it out. Okay, so you can see it spreads out nicely, but when you really dig into it, it ends up being nice and solid. It's what we call a non-Newtonian fluid. They're pretty awesome to explore. Another method that we can use to make slime includes just one more ingredient. Uh, this time we're using Elmer's glue as our base, contact solution or saline solution as an added component, and some baking soda along with our optional food coloring. So with this, I've measured out our ingredients ahead of time, but you will need a cup measure for our glue. There we go. A tablespoon measure for both the baking soda and the contact solution. And then just a couple drops of our food coloring. Let's get going. Slide those up out of the way here. So they're ready to go. Bring in our bowl, nice big mixing bowl here, and our spoon. So first, we wanna add our glue to our mixing bowl. Let's use that spoon to get the rest out of there. So it's about a cup of glue. Usually, depending on what brand of white glue you're getting, you get about a cup uh, with one container. I think the one I had uh, was just about seven ounces. A cup is eight ounces, so it's pretty close. So we have our glue. Since this is the most liquid that will be in our, our slime, we wanna add our color to it now, if you'd like to. And let's just add, let's do four drops of green food coloring there. Stir it around, get it nice and blended. Looks almost like slime already. Okay, so it's nice and blue or green. Let's add our baking soda. So again, this was one tablespoon of baking soda. Stir that in. Put 
Try to make sure there aren't any clumps. And then we'll start off with my one tablespoon of that saline solution, that contact solution. Mix that in. So right now it's pretty sticky. See, it's clumping around my spoon there. Oh, super slimy. So with this one, you can add more saline solution depending on how clumpy you want it to be. So let's go ahead. Got my tablespoon measure here. I'm going to add just another rough about half tablespoon of that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's so slimy. Okay, so this one, it's not as um, necessarily like a non-Newtonian fluid, like the last one we had with the cornstarch. This definitely is stuck together have a nice big slime mat here. So depending on your style, depending on how you want to work with it. Uh, again, this one, pick up, move around a lot. It stays together. With the other one, you notice when I set it down on something, it would just start running. This is doing that a little bit, but is mostly a big clump. So I hope we all had fun learning about slimy animals and plants here in the Adirondacks and making our very own slime. So we have the directions for the cornstarch slime and our glue-based slime on our website at wildcenter.org slash nature lab and i hope you have fun with those until next time happy exploring everybody